Okay, welcome to another um, in the series of Mastering My Songs. Today we're going to do one called Tracking Elephants, one I just put up. And um, we're going to start with a total blank slate here. It's Wave Lab with no songs in it. And um, I've set up a folder up here. These little, this little window right here allows you to set up um, shortcut folders. If you find a folder you like, you can drag it in here. Real convenient, and I've set up one where I keep all my uh, pre-mastered songs. So I can click on that, and I have my Tracking Elephant song here. I can just double-click it, drag it. I can, there's a million ways I can bring it in, but I'm just going to double-click it. And there it is. It opens the song up. Pre-mastered, nothing done to it yet. It was mixed from Cubase and bounced into here. Um, just some uh, housekeeping. If you go over to your master section, there's a little arrow. There's a little check, and then a little arrow next to a little check here. Hitting that clears anything out of your master section so that you don't have some plugin in there that you didn't know about when you're starting to do all this. So I click on that just to clear everything up. And uh, let's set some levels. Down here on the bottom, I, this allows me to control the speakers. These, these faders will actually uh, change data on your signal, so I'm, you know we're not going to mess with those. But down here at the very bottom, this little knob will allow me to turn the speaker volume up or down. So we're going to set a level here so we can hear the song without blowing our ears out. Let me set up a loop here and um, get this thing going. And let's turn the volume up so we can hear it. That shouldn't be too loud, I don't think. Let's go to the last section of the song. Okay. Hopefully you hear my voice and hear the music. All right. So let's get the, the basic things going. And what we're going to do on this one um, is after we master it, and when I, when I master things, like I, I've said before, I don't uh, focus on setting the levels or getting it loud. That's not what I'm doing with my mastering. What I'm doing with my mastering is making the thing sound as good as I possibly can for clarity and um, any uh, bad frequencies, anything like that. But then comes the point where you need to get it loud, um, depending on what you're trying to do, I guess. It you know, really depends. But for me, um, I'll tell you, let me just share something real quick and why loudness is still an issue. Um, it's, you know, again, it's becoming less and less on any of the streaming services. But I got to tell you, um, I had some songs up a while back, and I don't listen to iHeartRadio very much. That's. Uh, typically not the first place I go when I'm listening to any uh, music, but this particular day I was and um, found my songs on a playlist there on iHeart. So I let it play and I'm listening to my songs and enjoying them as I always do. And uh, then the next song came on and it blasted my song out. It made my song like sound like it didn't exist. It came on so loud. And I'm thinking, how can this be, you know? And then I'm listening to the next few songs, and they all came on super loud. And that's when I realized, man, the level of my song was pretty much pathetic compared to everybody else's. Now, if you listen to it on Spotify or anything else, they've level balanced it out. You listen to it on YouTube, they've pretty much level balanced it out. But there's still places out there that they haven't level balanced it. I think they finally got to iHeartRadio, I'm not sure. But the bottom line is, in the commercial world, you know, if uh, if your song ever gets placed, you know, next to a commercially released song that's been set at, you know, the volume that whatever the standard is out there these days, and you're not up to uh, the task, it, it makes your song sound pretty bad. It made my song sound pretty bad. I'll just I'll just take all the blame myself, and that made me realize, you know, I do have an obligation to try to get my songs up to a certain uh, volume, no matter what. And then just let the streaming service um, change it. And also, but see, in light of that, then it brings up the whole discussion. Well, if you have bring it up to loudness, but you crush it, and then they turn it back down, then your song sounds crushed at a low volume. Yes. So, again, the, the goal is not to crush your song to get it up to loudness, but to keep it exactly like, like you've created it, but then get it up to a commercial volume, you know, loudness level that uh, competes with anything else out there. And then the services can decide what they're going to do but if they turn everybody else down they'll turn you down but if they turn if everybody else is still loud you won't sound like uh you know like your first day at camp like you don't belong there or something and you don't want that with your music 
Okay, so all that being said, um, I'm, again, I'm going to share with you what I do and how I get my songs up to the same loudness, if not louder than anything else going on out there. So that is no longer a problem um, without destroying my song, and that's the whole goal. So let's get into this. So um, again, we're going to open up a master rig here. And um, I always open up a just a blank slate here. And um, get the song playing. And uh, I'm going to get the smart bypass going so that we're volume matching everything we're doing. Update the games. Now, when I hear the original and I hear the process, they will remain the same volume, same loudness. Beautiful tool. All right. So let's begin this. We're going to add an EQ in. I'm going to start correcting some of the unpleasantness. <laughs> Take a little bit out of the uh, 2 to 5K range. Match my games. Bump in the bass. Bring the key down. <clears throat> Bump on the kick. Match my games. I'm alive. Yep. Bring down the uh, low shelf. Not destroying the low end, not uh, removing it. Just a slight dip there. <clears throat> Find some highs. High shelf, a little extra breathing space. Match my gains. And in my opinion, we changed it from cardboard to extra clarity. That's the difference that makes. From cardboard to extra clarity. And the cardboard sounded good to me originally. <laughs> That's funny, isn't that how things are, right? There you go. Okay. Let's bring in a compressor. Let's uh, bring our low down just to just to kind of cover the low bump there. Bring our mids down somewhere between five and one k. Um, turn the music off for a minute. Let me turn all my auto gains on again. You know I always do. Not gonna mess with the ratios, not gonna mess with the attacks. Let's bring in the uh, thresholds and balance them. Start with the uh, low mids. Just getting a little bit of that tickle on the top. This removes the peaks. Almost anything that may be jumping out on the peaks. Highs. I see some activity there, it's not even doing anything. Low. There we go. Everybody's everybody's at the party, right? Okay. We balance this frequency. Um, I'm enjoying using my meter more on this now, where I can see the frequency spectrum as I'm balancing this. I want to hear it, but I want to see it too. But WaveLab just gave me a new update. 
that totally uh, ruined the way I normally do things by grabbing my bands. Watch what happens when I grab a band. Freezes my meters. Love it. You know, now I can't do what I normally do, so I got to use the knobs. So I wrote them, you know, what happened, why is this happening, and how do I turn it off? I get nothing, no response. So these are the things that don't make me completely happy, but, you know, a lot of it, I have to say, probably can be blamed on my computer. It's probably ready for an update as well, especially the graphics card, you know. So I can't fault Steinberg's brilliant engineering because I got a substandard computer but I'm not going out and spending you know a fortune on a computer right now either and I'm sure a lot of you can uh, relate to this as well so sometimes we got to just bite the bullet and make our technology work for us no matter what the constraints are so that being said <clears throat> I'm going to do what I normally do using knobs instead of my little dragging here and it's the output knob I'm going to use here so as I look at the um, frequency band I'm going to start in the low mids bump it up all the way An outrageously terrible sound in the low mids take it all the way down to where there's a dip see I can see that in the meter but you obviously can hear it too sometimes you think you hear it and you overcompensated so I like being able to see it Good right there for now. Let's do the high mids. And there's a there's a sound that'll take your ears off. Down to nothing. There's a lot of pleasantness right there. A little bit too much. Right there's good. The highs, yeah. Gotta make sure they're in there, but you want them. Too much of a sizzle. Bass. This is the important one. This is the one that will make or break your mix right here. But I have to be careful of it in my uh, mastering. Sometimes I'll just, I'll find out, I'll have that slamming against the ceiling and I won't really pay attention. That's it right there. That is a good balance. Let's recheck our games. Compare it. Oh yeah, I mean, listen to that. Sounds like there's no uh, meat to that one. And that sounds wide and open. I hope you're listening on some good headphones because you're not gonna hear this stuff otherwise. No doubt. All right, let's continue on. Some saturation in there. High mids to start with. That just adds a little bit of extra brightness on whatever band you want that extra extra brightness on. I don't like to overdo that though. You wind up again starting to get a kind of a squishy mix. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm not convinced yet. But let's go on. We're gonna go to the um, imager. Let's spread it out. Spread out the high mids. Now see when that's spread out, I can hear there's all that distortion in there. I'm gonna go back with that to my saturator for a minute. Yeah, see. So you can really tell sometimes when you've overdone it, overbaked it a little bit. Right, back to the image here. Crank that down. There we go. A little extra on the bottom. Update the gains. Oh yeah, I mean that. Oh, that sounds great. 
definitely more life to that sound. No doubt. Okay, that sounds good. Alright, last one. Let's kick in the um, limiter. Not even going to touch the optimize on this one. I'm going to leave it because I'm going to show you the secret sauce on this one this time. Kick the transients up though. High mids, highs. A little bit of that click. Not too much in the bass. Compare it. Alright, there we go. Okay, so, again, I would definitely spend more time on it, but I don't want to spend two hours on a, a video here, you guys are driving nuts, so, um, I'm, you're getting the, you're getting the, you know, refined idea of the, of the thing instead of the, all the gory details. So, that being said, I'm going to close this down, and now I'm going to render off this file with what I've mastered here. Um, so... Now the so the so the the uh, master rig and all those plugins are going to become part of the file. It's not going to just be an extra uh, feed through anymore. It's going to actually be uh, committed to the file. So let's render it off. Yes, I'm sure. <coughs> this takes a second. Little blue bar in the bottom left hand corner shows it rendering off. As you can see, hardly made a big change in the volume at all. You know, here's the original one, and here's the new one not a big deal right but thickened and that's what I try to go for try the the thing I want to point out here and this is this is what you're gonna find and again it's funny with this whole subject you know of mixing mastering and all the stuff you're doing one thing leads to the other in terms of what result you're gonna get is you're mixing your song the more you have these little sharp peaks in here and then you get to the mastering stage the more you're going to have to deal with those if you're trying to get your mix up to loudness. So again, the better you become at your mixing and learn how to keep these peaks kind of under control without destroying your sound. And that's a big subject, you know. Um, again, I intend to share some of my uh, things that I've learned over the time I've been doing this. But, you know, there's a lot of information out there about all this kind of stuff. And but this this is where it becomes important because again when it comes time to mix it down or master it and make it loud, this is where this stuff will have an effect. And um, so you want to kind of start to become aware of some of these things. That being said, so there it is. It's mixed down. It's mastered with my uh, master rig effects on there. So I'm going to go up here and hit the little arrow to close this. It removes all of the the plugins of my chain again. I just like to keep those out of there because I've had mistakes sometimes where they get rendered a second time. I don't like that. And uh, now let's uh, put this into a montage. Gonna open it up, and I have the option to create from this file to make a montage. I'm gonna do that. Yes. And there it is. So there's my a somewhat mastered song, at least mastered in terms of sound quality, not to loudness yet. We haven't even got to the loudness stage yet, but just to the sound quality, clarity. Frequency, spectrum, balance. Bass has got a nice curve moving down the line. Nice. Stereo spread, everything that, that, that makes it sound good. Now, here's the, here's the, uh, the secret sauces. So I'm going to, pro here's the thing, I go to the process tab. <clears throat> I'm going to, I have this auto split function which I've set up to just basically lop off the beginning and end of the song takes off the dead uh, air nice and neat I go to my fade tab I set up my fade out uh, hit a little apply there puts a slight little fade out at the end so I know it's gonna when the song ends it's gonna go to zero not gonna be any clicks or pops at the end of the song but when it ends or something like that and the song is gonna start right at the beginning all right, so there it is. Okay, now, here we go. Let's make this guy loud. Here's what I do. I go up to uh, my file browser, and in my file browser, I have um, saved a number of uh, songs, you know, that are hit songs. Now, again, let me go off on a minute and say this, share this with you. 
it's no crime to invest in some music to use as a reference. <laughs> I know these days that spending money on music seems like it's become a crime. It's not a crime. If you're into composing, writing, and hopefully getting your songs uh, to a professional level, you're, you're helping your peers, you're supporting your peers, but you're also helping yourself. I'll tell you, if, uh, a couple things to observe. Like I'm going to drag this song in right now from, uh, from a CD I have. This is a commercial song that was, um, if it was not, if it's not number one now, which I don't think it is now, it was maybe a month ago. So it's basically just a, a hit song from the charts that I went and purchased the CD. Now, this is what it looks like off the CD. Look at look at the shape of that. Uh, you know that thing is maxed, right? Look at it compared to my song. But this is maxed out without clipping, without distorting, um, you know. And I've tried a couple of things. I've tried to uh, download it or uh, copy it from, you know, a streaming service or, you know, whether it's iTunes or Spotify or whatever, and try to get something of the same, take the same song and try to burn it on the WaveLab, but it doesn't come out the same. There's no way you're going to get it off the Internet and get an accurate read of how it was... Uh, how it left the mastering studio out there in the real world. Now there's other options, you know, there are services out there that provide, you know, wave files at high quality and stuff. But to me, it's okay to just go out and buy a CD once in a while. You know, come on guys, really, go out and buy a CD once in a while of something that you're into, that's something you respect and like, the style of music you're into, and look at it, study it, you know, you don't have to buy one every week, but Every once in a while, make that little investment, you know, and um, you'll be happier that you did. So, here I am with a song from CD, professionally mixed, mastered, and uh, distributed out there in the real world. And that's the goal. This is what I got to get my song to match this. All right, so here's what we do. Um, I go to uh, <clears throat> my uh, process tab, hit my meta normalizer, and um, there's a preset in here that says uh, all clips equal. I take that, but I kind of adjust it. I uh, uncheck this audio montage out, but I only leave the clips, um, match the loudest clips. And uh, the options here says match loudest clip, reference loudness entire clip, and ignore the peaks. Ignoring the peaks is very important because if you take any of these other options, limit digital peaks, limit the true peaks, you will not get your song to the loudest of this it'll intend instead take this song and bring it down to yours and that's not what you're trying to achieve so i'm going to apply this and boom there you go my song is now as loud as the commercial song with problems there's still some things to overcome in other words i'm still peeking out way over uh zero here in order to get to this loudness so i've kind of in some ways solved my problem but i've also created a problem for myself because Potentially, I'm just I've clipped my song, but the thing to understand, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I solve this. But I haven't uh, compressed it, so if I play this, let me turn this volume down again because this is gonna blow our ears out now at this new volume. Let me get rid of this song. All right, so here's my song. Let me turn the volume down first, way down, because it's different than it was. Loop this last section, play it, and bring this volume up. We're a listenable level. All right, so there's my song. Now at a commercial volume level. But look at these meters. They are like blowing them the top off. So you know, in theory. Now again, let me let me share a couple things. Why doesn't it sound distorted yet? In other words, I'm playing this thing at this this enormously raised volume but and you're not going to know as well as I do I know my song I can tell you it's it's that's the way it was meant to sound it hasn't changed in character yet um you know I mean there's a lot of kind of distortion in there but I've built that into the song itself so that's not this making it that way so anyway this song is now up at the right loudness but if I were to take that song and just stick it on a CD like this, most stereo systems would, it would sound like, oh, I can't even imagine. So we have to address the fact that even though it's loud enough, it's not loud enough and usable, all right? So here's the next steps we gotta go through. So we're gonna render this off 
um, again and uh, I have to select it I have to hit the render button I've already done it so it's asking me if I want to overwrite it yes I do uh, oops I made a change on the CD thing let's go to a uh, whole montage <coughs> render it off and there it is okay now it's getting to be more of a sausage but it still has a lot of dynamic you know room in it but it's definitely louder I mean let's let's go back to where we started there's where we started right okay here's where we are is any, any difference yeah there's a big difference but still not really um, done because there's peaks here that are again clipping and going over the top we got to address these we don't want to destroy it again that's the goal and that's been the challenge for me uh, it's been really challenging to try to achieve that because most of the time anything I do just at this point if I try to fix it it ruins the song so here's where it gets really tricky but here's what we do if I um go up to my metadata and I add my metadata in here and I have a preset kind of set up for fills in all my let's put the uh, title of the song here tracking elephants so it's good to put metadata on your songs you know when they go out there in the real world and they're no longer you know, your babies anymore or they're out there where they can be played in any number of ways you want some kind of identification on them it's not a bad thing and uh, let's see here okay okay and there he goes it fills in all the pertinent metadata that I use right now the one that says I'm the composer and when I wrote it in the copyright and everything now there's a little star here by my song a little asterisk that means it hasn't been saved so I'm gonna control save it and right away then this I don't have an answer to yet I'm still trying to figure out how WaveLab does this or what it does but it does it so I'm just passing it on to you it lops it off at zero once I add that metadata or resave this file this is already at, at the zero point we're still not there yet we still got some true peak clipping that we have to deal with I'm going to show you what that is in a second but this is dis pretty much distributable because if things stay in the digital domain this song will play just fine and I've done I've proved it because I've distributed it, all my songs this way quite a few of them as tests and they sound great they come through on all the services loud and proud and no distortion and no uh, nothing let me turn this down again play a bit of it and there you go that is that is that commercial level let me tell you there is nothing that's going to dwarf the volume of that okay but we still got a problem to solve let me show you the problem if I go down to the bottom area here with these little tabs and I got a little tab here that says loudness I click on that it's gonna build um, shows them uh, this is a thing in itself I'm, I'll be making a video coming up on this to help understand because this is very confusing when you first look at it but the main thing all these little graphs are showing you the momentary the integrated loudness all the different loudnesses but here's the thing you want to focus on you know, if you can see it on your screen you see all these little red dots at the very top I mean at the very top here here they break up there's just a few little dots this is clipping this is true peak clipping where the song is going over the zero mark or at least in true peaks you know things you may not even see on the meter it may show zero on the meter but this is registering true peaks which could lead to some distortion and some bad sounds where this is played depending on where this is played now again there's discussions about this this these days the true peaks hardly matters well it's a, it's really you know let's let's pretend today for this discussion it matters so we're gonna go with that premise so the goal is how do we remove these these are like hemorrhoids <laughs> in my song that's what they are we got to get these out of here how do we you know it's all this, all this other stuff the yellow and the red and all these the, or the pinks and all this stuff this is all good but these red little dots up here those got to go we got to get those out of here so what do we do we go down to uh, the final effects area here and we put in we're finally going to add a limiter um, I got a brick wall limiter here but if I add any limiting on here it destroys my song again 
You know, if I let, if I, uh, watch, let me play a little of this. If I bring this down. Play it so it's looped here. Go back to uh, the waveform again. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. We'll turn it up when we're listening to it. All right, so look at that. You know, I mean, it's it's crushing my song. So what I do is I basically don't do anything with it. I set it right at zero. I don't put, you know, I don't put 0.3, I don't put negative 0.3, I just leave it right at zero. That way I know I'm not going to crush it, I'm not going to do anything to it, in theory, but I'm also not going to let any of that true peak information escape it. Alright, so let's do that. So we're going to put that limiter on there at zero, bake it at that point. And let's render this one more time. <clears throat> Up to the render button. Might have to change the name of this, but let's see what it does here. Yeah, I gotta change the name. So I'm gonna call it uh with limiting. Render it off. It comes down just a fraction, just a little bit. But now watch this. Let's play it. Look at these meters now. No clipping. Coming in at just point, point zero, just under the mark, true peak, no distortion, no limiting. We've lost no quality in the sound from where we started, but we finally achieved getting the song up to loud, loud without mush. Now let's look at this. Let's take this, go back to, let's do an analysis of this. Hit the analyze tab, global analysis. Let's find out how loud we are. We're, we're rocking out at right at about a negative point eight, negative eight point seven. That's pretty loud. That's pretty loud. I mean, you know, we could we could probably crush it more, but this I'm completely happy with this. You know, most of this, uh, I've done a, a research. Most of your songs, um, even the loudest ones out there, are anywhere from nine. Negative nine, negative eight, negative seven sometimes. Sometimes negative seven. But this is completely acceptable. This will hold its hold its head up high in any uh, playlist of any, you know, with any other song of its style. So that's it. That's really it. Once we're done with that, we can um, send it out there to the world. So let's listen to it, just a little bit of it. I'm going to give you a little preview of this. <clears throat> Bring the volume up and let's see what we got here. I'm gonna buy him up. Uh, I can tell you that it maintained the quality of the song. It did not change it and turn it into a crushed, compressed pile of garbage. Um, <laughs> I mean, everybody's opinion on what the, how the, the music is, that's another story. But the, but the distribu distribution and the final um, you know, packaging of the product, it achieved what it was trying to achieve. It did not 
kill that song. So, okay, well, that's it. Thanks for uh, joining me. I'll put a link to the song. You can check it out on Spotify. And uh, we're going to do this again coming up in the future. Have a great one. <laughs>